There's no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. There's no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. There's no God. There is no God. But Worthy Allah. worship. There's Only no God. Allah. But Allah. There's no God. Greetings and welcome to this channel. If you are new, this is the House of David and this is a channel of truth. Now we do expose Christianity on this channel. We do expose the Israelite camps, but we love our brothers. We love them. We are simply telling the truth. We know that lies are murderers of the truth. And I always didn't preach this way. I was Christian about 20 years ago. I used to study my Bible all the time. I would have friends say, why are you always studying the Bible? And that's what I would do in my free time. Like I'm not a TV head. I'm not a gamer. I've always just been a man that's in the book. And that's why I'm not allowing you Christians to get away. Because when I came to Islam, I came to Islam with no pressure from the outside world. I came to Islam from the Bible. And that's why I teach the Bible all the time. And I show the truth of Islam from the Bible. So if you have a problem with my channel, you have a problem with the Bible. Everything I'm bringing out for the most part is in the Bible. I came to Islam from the Bible and I want you to come to Islam from your very own Bible. Now the Christians, they are lying. They're saying Jesus is God with no evidence. You can't take Jesus saying before Abraham was I am because Jesus only spoke in parables. He spoke in parables to hide the truth. Now, we're not going to get nowhere if you don't have any respect for your very own Bible. Your Bible tells you in Mark chapter 4, your Bible tells you in Matthew 13 that everything Jesus spoke was a parable. In fact, this was the only way he taught. He taught in parables to hide the truth that was a secret from the foundations of the world. So when Jesus said before Abraham was I am, that right there, my friend, was a parable. He was not speaking to his disciples. He was speaking to the crowds. He was speaking to the Pharisees. And we know he was not giving them the secret that easy. That's why they tried to kill him so many times. Why? Because he was speaking a parable and they did not understand him. They thought he literally was trying to make himself equal with God. And that was not true. He was speaking of his father. And his father was the apostate, self-proclaimed apostle Paul. Think of David. He had a wicked dad that was always trying to kill him. Who was his daddy? Oh, his name was Saul. Okay, now think of the son of David, Jesus. Who is his daddy according to the Bible? Paul is. Paul claimed to be the father in 1 Corinthians 4.15. He is the father of the Christian church. He is considered the last messenger for the Christians. He wrote 13 letters. Hebrews is questionable. Okay. He said that he was the least and the last of all seen of Christ and least going into him being the greatest. That's why he always boasted about everything he did for Christ. Paul was of the Antichrist, and the church has failed to figure that out. Now, what's going on is there's a lot of money invested in Christianity. A lot of so-called smart people have invested a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of resources in Christianity. But the truth of this whole thing it's all a fraud. It's all built on lies. And our Bible teachers of the past, our Billy Grahams of yesterday, was wrong. Probably about 99% of what they brought out was false. The white man, I'm not racist, but I have to expose his wickedness. He is the one who has been our teacher. And most of everything he taught us in the Bible is dead wrong. Now, I do give credit where credit is due. They have done a good job in copying 
and printing Bibles and things like that, although they always put their two cents in, they always put their commentaries, okay, but they have done their best to preserve the text which came from Israel. So we give them credit for that. But for the most part, everything they taught us was completely false. Now let's deal with the fact that Jesus spoke in parables. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13 and let's go to the verse 34. And all these things spake Jesus unto the multitudes in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. In other words, he did not speak to nobody except he used a parable. Verse 35, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, and that is Isaiah, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Every time Jesus opened his mouth, a parable came out. Every time Jesus opened his mouth, a secret that was hid from the foundations of the world came out. And he's not going to let you get it that easy. When he said, I and my father is one, he's not talking about God Almighty. And what will help you if you receive the truth of Islam? In Islam, we know that Allah has no sons. And it is a monstrous thing to even say such a thing. So with this ultimate guidance we have from the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, that right there can help us to recover ourselves from the snare that's in the Bible. Allah has no sons. This is why Jesus spoke in parables. When he said, he that have seen me have seen the Father. He was not talking about God Almighty. Allah has no sons. Jesus had no father. Okay? He was born supernaturally. When Jesus said the good one right here. Before Abraham was I am. He was not speaking literally. He was speaking in a parable. Now all of these scriptures all point to Paul being the father of the Christian church. He is the ham. Many of you don't know who Ham is because most Christians, they run to John. Ham was a father who looked upon his father's nakedness. And his son was cursed as a result of it. And his son was a servant of servants to his brothers. Now, this is exactly what Paul did in the nation of Israel. He made Jesus his son. And he was the father of the Christian church. This is seen. In 1 Corinthians 4.15, this is seen in Philmon. Paul believed that he was the messenger out of Arabia. That's why he called the church saints. This is seen in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. Now, we know for a fact that Jesus spoke in parables. So if he spoke in parables, how are you going to take him literally? That's the Christian's problem. Everything Jesus spoke, they want to take it literal. Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Was he telling you to come right over to him and start eating his body and drinking his blood? No, he was speaking in a parable. Now, you have to understand, Jesus never, ever claimed to be God in the flesh. He always spoke of one being greater than him, even John the Baptist. Jesus always was a servant unto his brothers. He even washed his disciples' feet. And we know God ain't washing nobody's feet. We know that God is not a servant. God doesn't serve anybody. According to the Bible, we ought to worship the Lord our God, and him only shall we serve. So the white man's teaching of Christianity has destroyed us as a nation of people. Many of our brothers in the Israelite camps, they hate the white man, but they fail to realize they are still under the white man's teaching. Okay, we know for a fact that everything that we was taught in Christianity, for the most part, came from him. Until we come home to our brethren, okay, the Arabians, and receive the truth of Islam, we will be on the same side as Edom. And Edom is a metaphor. It is a metaphor for the house of Saul, whose founder is Paul of the Christian church. Christians fail to understand that Paul is their father. 
Paul tells you boldly that he is the father. He tells you in Philmon, he is the father of Onesimus. This man literally thought he was somebody great. And the apostle Paul has ruined all of our lives. And so my Christian brothers, Israelites, y'all all are Christian. Okay, y'all need to come home to the truth that is in Islam. For one, Jesus never, ever claimed to be God in the flesh. There's not one scripture in the Bible that says Jesus is God verbatim. No, that's not in there. There are scriptures in the Bible four times verbatim that says God is not a man. There are scriptures in the Bible where Jesus is called a man. He is the son of of none okay he is a fatherless child okay the only father he had was joseph and that is a picture of his twin brother the apostate paul think of jacob and esau esau came out hairy he was the heir he was destined to have the firstborn rights but what happened jacob came after him grabbing a hold of his heel. And he tricked his father by putting on the hair. Okay, this is a picture of Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing. And he stole his brother's birthright. Okay, and this is all what Benjamin, we call him Benjamin. Um, you may call him Saul. Some may call him Paul. It's all going to the man with the fur. It's all pointing to the Pharaoh. It's all pointing to the Pharisee. The wolf in sheep clothing, Paul. Many of us, we have not decoded the Bible yet. And we have to understand that Jesus spoke in parables. Why is it so hard to understand that? Why is it so hard to understand that Jesus saying before Abraham was I am, was only a parable. He didn't say it in Matthew. He didn't say it in Mark. He didn't say it in Luke. He said it one time in the Gospel of John to the Pharisees. And the Christians are going crazy thinking he's God in the flesh. Shame on us. It's because of our Bible teachers. They haven't taught us the truth. They haven't taught us something very simple and something basic that is seen in Matthew. Chapter 13, that Jesus only spoke in parables. He only spoke in parables. He was uttering secrets from the foundations of the world. And right here in the house of David, we have a secret that's been covered, hidden since the foundations of the world. And that Jesus has a father by the name of Paul. Think of David. David had a father who was always trying to kill him 26 times. It was the same name as the man who gave us the 13 letters. It is none other than Saul. Now, Saul was a father to David and King Saul of the New Testament. OK, he is a father to Jesus. Saul is like King Ahab. OK, his wife guilty of forgery, <laughs> writing letters in his name. He was the king of Israel, but he ran to Jehoshaphat and he said, hey, come to battle with me. And Jehoshaphat said, me and you are one. He said, we are both one. I and my people and your people. We are all one. He said the same thing that the Christians love quoting. I and my father is one. He was trying to hide behind Jehoshaphat and have Jehoshaphat killed in battle so that he could stay alive. He knew that they only was looking for him. OK, the Syrians were told fight with nobody great, fight with nobody small, only fight with the king of Israel. And there was a time when they was about to kill Jehoshaphat. But Jehoshaphat, he cried out. And then a man. A certain man at random, he wasn't even aiming, he shot an arrow 
and it hit the king of Israel in between the joints of his harness. And that's exactly what we did right here in the house of David with Paul. I wasn't focused on Paul. I wasn't focused on him. It just came by revelation. Okay, just studying. And then I made an awesome discovery that Paul indeed is the wolf in sheep clothing. Now we need you to get this truth out. These Bible teachers of today are gone. These Christian debaters, I'm not worried about them. They focused on winning. Okay, if they simply visited my channel and seen the content that's coming out of this house, they know there would be no challenge. OK, because in fact, what I'm teaching will embarrass them. OK, this is bigger than winning a debate. This is about freeing the world from the prison we call Christianity. And I encourage you, brothers, to stop going by what the white man has taught us. Now, I'm not racist. I'm just being truthful. OK, he's a very smart guy. But when it comes to the Bible, this brother is off. And we love our brothers, our brothers of all nations, okay? But we have to deal with reality. And I can't sit up here and be fake. I got to expose the lies with the truth. The white man is guilty of teaching Christianity falsely to us. And he must be exposed for that. There should be millions of pastors from the nation of Edom weeping and crying for how they participated in misleading the world. And this goes for the black pastors. This goes for all of you in Christianity who are leading all of those blind people into the same ditch you are falling in. This right here is the remedy this right here is the medicine right here in the house of David. This is the medicine for your sickness called Christianity. We have the healing and the healing is in Islam. Islam is the healing for all religions. OK, we simply worship him with no partners. We thank God for the messenger, the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Who could not read or write? And this is seen in Isaiah 29. And he was given the book. A man comes on the scene with the truest prophecy. And that is Jesus was not crucified. He also tells us in now Toba 9.33 that Islam will prevail above all religions and look around today islam is the fastest growing religion okay and by 2050 2075 it is predicted by the christians that it will be the largest religion so that's all i wanted to give you today i want you to understand that everything jesus spoke was in a parable when he was speaking of the father, speaking of the father, that was David speaking of Saul. Simply put, that was David speaking of Saul. That was Jesus speaking of Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing that came out of the desert. He came out of Arabia, the same place Jesus warned us about. The wolf in sheep clothing with the false signs and the miracles. Jesus was telling you about Paul. OK, his teachings will be like a hitopel. It will be like the counsel of God. And that's why most of all, even the very elect has been almost hoodwinked, almost deceived. I encourage you to recover yourself from the snare. Keep in mind that Isaiah was sent to blind the people. Isaiah was sent out to make sure that the people did not hear the truth and repent. And I encourage you to recover yourself from that snare by reading the Bible with new eyes, understanding that everything Jesus spoke requires deep thought. It was a parable. And think about the children. Y'all going around teaching that Jesus is God. Y'all confusing the children. We know 
that the Bible says. If God was hungry, he wouldn't tell you, okay? And we know that Jesus ate. We know that the Bible says God does not slumber, and we know that Jesus slept. Y'all confusing the kids because the Bible is saying Jesus is the Son of Man, Son of Man, Son of Man, Son of God, all of this confusion, and then y'all saying he's God Almighty, y'all saying he's the Father. Y'all confusing the people. In Islam, it's so simple. It's such a religion of logic. We simply have one God who is not associated with nobody. He is God all by himself. See, that's the truth you want to tell the children. Let's, let's stop confusing them with this I am garbage, this Yahweh mess. Jesus said I am. He didn't say I am, that I am. And in 1 Kings 18 and 7, it reads, And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him. And he knew him and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord Elijah? So the man prostrated before Elijah and said, Are you my Lord? And this is what Elijah says. And he answered him, I am. Does that mean that Elijah is God? No. Go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Now, Elijah was Jesus' match. Elijah rose the dead. Elijah was called master. Elijah healed the sick. And Elijah went to heaven alive. Now, this man also said, I am. That does not mean he's God. For these Christians talking this, Jesus is Yahweh mess. According to the Bible, his name shall be called Jesus. He never once told anyone to call him, I am that I am. And then they say, well, Jesus received worship. If he wasn't God, he wouldn't have, have received worship. Well, you haven't read the Bible. According to 1 Chronicles 29 and 20, I'm going to read it. And David said to all the congregation, now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord and the king. They worshiped the Lord and they worshiped David. This is seen in the story of Joseph. All of his brothers did obeisance to him. Elijah as well, according to Jeremiah in 8, it reads, At the time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, out of their graves, and they shall spread them before the sun, and the moon, and all the hosts of heaven, whom they have loved, and of whom they have served. And after whom they have walked and of whom they have sought and get this and of whom they have worshipped. So there we have scripture in the Bible where other people were worshipped. That does not mean they were God. So the Christian, he has no argument. Jesus said he was the son of God, but he also said that you are God's, which is greater. A God or a son of a God. Okay? A God is greater than a son of God. So the Christians, they, they lost. They have nothing. They have no legs to stand on. The ground has swallowed up the sons of Korah. And all they have is assumption. And the prophet Mohammed, peace and blessings, he told us that. All those who say Jesus was crucified, they are following mere assumption. So there you have it. You have scriptures in the Bible where other people were worshipped. You have scriptures in the Bible where other people said, I am. Doesn't mean they were God. Wake up. Just because someone is winning Christian debates, okay, against Muslims who don't know the Bible, okay, you can't believe everything they say. And a lot of y'all get that Yahweh mess from God logic. Y'all get that stuff from Christian Prince. Y'all get that stuff from your boy Sam. And y'all don't want to study the Bible for your own selves. And then you come with that garbage and then get slaughtered 
when you come to the house of David. Because in the house of David, we didn't start off in Islam. We started off on the same ground you standing on. And that is the Bible. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.